Chapter 5 Love and Hate Marilla, said Anne one day, do any other little girls live near Green Gables? I'd like to have a best friend. Yes, answered Marilla. Diana Barry is the same age as you. She lives at Orchard Slope, across the river. I'm going to visit her mother this afternoon. You can come with me. Mrs. Barry was a tall, thin woman. Diana was a very pretty little girl, with black hair and dark eyes. She had a little sister, Minnie May. Minnie May was three years old. Diana, take Anne outside, said Mrs. Barry. Anne and Diana went outside and stood quietly by the flowers. Then they started to talk. They talked all afternoon. Did you like Diana, Anne? asked Marilla later. Oh, yes, said Anne happily. Diana is wonderful. Anne and Diana met every day. Sometimes they played in the woods. Sometimes they read books and told stories. Then summer ended and September came. Anne went to school in Avonlea. She was good at her lessons and she liked the other girls. But Anne didn't like the teacher, Mr. Phillips, very much. One day there was a new boy in school. He was tall with brown hair. The girls liked him. That's Gilbert Blythe, Diana said to Anne. His family went away for the summer. They came back on Saturday. Gilbert's desk was near Anne's desk. He often looked at her. He wanted her to look at him too. She was different from the other girls in Avonlea. But Anne wasn't interested in Gilbert. Gilbert took Anne's hair in his hand. Carrots, he said loudly. Carrots! Anne jumped to her feet and looked at Gilbert angrily. I hate you, she cried. I hate you! She hit Gilbert on the head with her slate, and the slate broke. Everybody looked at her. Mr. Phillips ran to her. Anne Shirley, what are you doing? He asked. Answer me. Anne didn't do anything wrong, said Gilbert quickly. I was rude about her hair. Anne, go and stand in front of the class, said Mr. Phillips. Anne stood in front of the class all afternoon. Everybody looked at her. But Anne didn't look at anybody. I'll never speak to Gilbert Blythe again, she thought. After school, Gilbert tried to talk to Anne, but she walked past him. Don't be angry with Gilbert, Anne, said Diana. He laughs at my hair because it's very black. Gilbert Blythe was very unkind, said Anne. The children often played outside after lunch. Sometimes they were late for afternoon school. The next day, Mr. Phillips was in the classroom when Anne arrived with flowers in her hair. Anne Shirley, you're late, Mr. Phillips said. Take those flowers out of your hair. Then go and sit with Gilbert Blythe. I can't sit next to Gilbert, Anne thought. I hate him. She got up slowly from her desk and sat down next to Gilbert. But she didn't look at him. She put her head on her arms. A little later, Gilbert pushed some candy under Anne's arm. Anne took the candy and threw it onto the floor. At the end of the day, Anne took her slate and her books. What are you doing, Anne? asked Diana in surprise. I'm taking my things home, said Anne. I'm going to study there. I'm not coming back to school again. 
Later, Anne told Marilla about Mr. Phillips. I'll learn my lessons at home, she said. I'll work hard and I'll be a good girl, but I'm not going back to Mr. Phillips. Marilla went to see Mrs. Lynde. What shall I do? she asked. Leave Anne at home, said Mrs. Lynde. She'll get bored. Then she'll want to go back to school. Anne learned her lessons at home. In the evening, she played with Diana. She loved Diana, but she hated Gilbert Blythe. Chapter 6 Diana Comes to Tea Anne, I'm going out this afternoon, said Marilla one Saturday. You can invite Diana here for tea. There's cake and a bottle of fruit cordial on a shelf in the kitchen closet. When Diana arrived, the two little girls played outside. I'm very thirsty, said Diana after a time. Would you like some fruit cordial? asked Anne. She went to the kitchen closet and got the bottle. The cordial was a dark red color. Anne wasn't thirsty, but Diana drank a big glass of it. This is very nice, she said. Can I have another glass? After three glasses of cordial, Diana put her hands to her head. I'm not feeling very well, she said. I have to go home. But Diana, cried Anne sadly, don't you want any cake? No, said Diana. I have to go home now. The next day, Sunday, it rained all day, and Anne stayed at home. On Monday, Marilla sent Anne to Mrs. Lynde's house. But Anne came back very quickly and ran into the kitchen. Anne, what's wrong? asked Marilla. Why are you crying? Mrs. Barry was at Mrs. Lynde's house today, said Anne. She said very bad things about me. When Diana left here on Saturday, she was drunk. Drunk? cried Marilla in surprise. What did you give her? Only the fruit cordial, answered Anne unhappily. Marilla went to the kitchen closet and found the bottle of cordial. She looked at it. It wasn't fruit cordial. It was red wine. Oh, no, she thought. I remember now. The fruit cordial is in the other closet. Marilla went to see Mrs. Barry. She tried to tell Mrs. Barry about the mistake, but Mrs. Barry didn't want to listen. That Anne Shirley is a very bad little girl, she said. I don't want Diana to play with her again. Anne was very sad. She loved Diana very much. Some days later, she went back to school. I can't be Diana's friend now, Anne told Marilla, but I can look at her in school. Anne worked hard. The other girls liked her, and she had a lot of friends. But she was very unhappy about Diana. One evening, some weeks later, Marilla went to a meeting in Charlottetown the most important town on Prince Edward Island. Mrs. Lynde and Diana's parents went to the meeting, too. They all slept in Charlottetown that night. Anne and Matthew stayed at home. They sat in the kitchen. Anne studied her lessons at the table. Suddenly, Diana ran through the door. Her face was very white. Oh, Anne, please come quickly she said. Minnie May is very sick. She has croup. Maybe she's going to die. 
Matthew got up quietly and put on his coat. I'll go for the doctor, he said, and went out. Don't be afraid, Diana, said Anne. I know about croup. Mrs. Hammond had eight children, and they all had it. Wait, Marilla has some medicine. I'll bring it with me. Anne went with Diana to the Barry's house. The ground was white with snow. When they arrived at the house, Anne went to Minnie May. She was very sick. Now, Diana, bring me hot water, said Anne. She undressed Minnie May and put her to bed. Then she gave her some medicine. All night, Minnie May was very sick. But in the early morning, she slept quietly. Matthew arrived with the doctor. I'm sorry we're late, he said. The doctor wasn't at home. I had to wait for a long time. The doctor looked at Minnie May. You did very well, Anne, he said. Anne drove home with Matthew in the snow. When they arrived at Green Gables, Anne went to bed. That afternoon, Marilla was downstairs in the kitchen. How was the meeting, Marilla? asked Anne. Fine, answered Marilla. Listen, Anne, Mrs. Barry was here this morning and told me about Minnie May's croup. She wanted to say thank you to you, and she's very sorry about the fruit cordial. She wants you and Diana to be friends again. Oh, Marilla, that's wonderful, cried Anne. Can I go and see Diana now? Yes, said Marilla, and smiled. Anne ran quickly to Diana's house. It was cold, and she had no coat or hat. But she was the happiest girl in Avonlea. Chapter 7 A Cake for Mrs. Allen The long summer vacation began at the end of June. Mr. Phillips left the Avonlea school. The old minister left the church, too, and a new minister came. His name was Mr. Allen. He brought his pretty young wife with him. I'll ask Mr. and Mrs. Allen to tea on Wednesday, said Marilla. Oh, Marilla, said Anne excitedly, can I make a cake? All right, Anne, said Marilla. On Wednesday morning, Anne got up early and made her cake. It looked very good. In the afternoon, Anne put flowers around the table. Then Mr. and Mrs. Allen arrived. The table looks beautiful, they said. Anne felt very happy. She sat at the table with Matthew and Marilla. Matthew wore his best clothes. Would you like some cake, Mrs. Allen? asked Anne. I made it for you. Yes, please, said Mrs. Allen, and she smiled. Anne cut some cake for Mrs. Allen. Mrs. Allen put the cake in her mouth and started to eat it. But she didn't look very happy. Is something wrong? thought Marilla. She tried some cake, too. Anne Shirley, she cried. What did you put in this? Only, only vanilla, answered Anne. She went to the kitchen and brought back a small bottle. On the front of the bottle it said, Best Vanilla. Marilla opened the bottle. This isn't vanilla, she said. It's medicine. Last week I broke the medicine bottle. I put the medicine into this old vanilla bottle. Medicine, said Anne. Oh, she ran upstairs to her room. She cried and cried. A little later, Anne heard somebody on the stairs, but she didn't look up. Oh, Marilla, she said, I'm very unhappy. Everybody in Avonlea will hear about my cake. They'll laugh at me. I can't go downstairs. I can't look at Mrs. Allen again. I'm very sorry, Marilla. Please tell Mrs. Allen. 
You tell her, Anne, said Mrs. Allen. Anne looked up. Mrs. Allen, she said in surprise. Yes, it's me, said Mrs. Allen, and laughed. Don't cry, Anne. The medicine in the cake was a very funny mistake. I'm sorry, Mrs. Allen, said Anne. I wanted to make a nice cake for you. I know, said Mrs. Allen. Now please come down and show me your flowers. I'm very interested in flowers. Anne felt happy again. She went downstairs with Mrs. Allen, and nobody said anything about the cake. A week later, Anne ran into the kitchen at Green Gables. She was very excited. She had a letter in her hand. Mrs. Allen is inviting me to tea tomorrow afternoon, she said. Look at this letter, Marilla. It says, Miss Anne Shirley, Green Gables. Nobody called me Miss before. The next afternoon, Anne went to tea with Mrs. Allen. I had a wonderful time with Mrs. Allen, she told Marilla later. She's very kind, and she wore a beautiful dress. We talked for a long time. I told her about Mrs. Thomas and Mrs. Hammond and the orphanage. I told her about Green Gables and the school, too. Mrs. Allen told me something interesting. A new teacher is coming to Avonlea after the vacation. Her name is Miss Muriel Stacy. Isn't that a pretty name? I want to meet her very much. Chapter 8 An Accident and a New Dress Some weeks later, Diana had a party. She invited Anne and the other girls in her class. They had a very good time. After tea, the girls played outside. Let's play a new game, said one of the girls. Let's do exciting things. Who can climb the big tree by Diana's front door? One of the girls climbed the tree. Then another girl thought of something more exciting. Who can climb up to the top of Diana's house? She said. I can, cried Anne. She ran to the house. Stop, Anne, called Diana. That's very dangerous. Anne started to climb to the top of the house, but it was very difficult. Suddenly, she fell to the ground. Diana ran to her. Oh, Anne, Anne, are you dead? She said. Anne opened her eyes. Her face was very white. No, I'm not dead, Diana, she said. But my leg hurts. I can't walk. Mr. Barry carried Anne home to Green Gables. When Marilla saw Mr. Barry with Anne in his arms, she felt very afraid. Was Anne dead? I love Anne very much, she thought. I know that now. She ran to Mr. Barry. What happened? she asked. Don't be afraid, Marilla, said Anne. I fell off Diana's house. Anne couldn't go back to school. She stayed home for seven weeks. Her friends came to see her every day. They brought her flowers and books. She had many other visitors, too. Mrs. Allen and Mrs. Lynde came often. When Anne's leg was better, she went back to school. She liked Miss Stacy very much. Miss Stacy was a very good young teacher, and Anne worked hard in her lessons. I love Miss Stacy, Anne said to Marilla and Matthew one evening. She wants us to give a concert at Christmas. Isn't that exciting? Diana's going to sing a song and I'm going to say two poems. One evening, Matthew went into the kitchen at Green Gables. Anne's friends were there. 
They laughed and talked about the concert. They were very excited. Matthew watched them. Anne looks different from the other girls, but why, he thought. He thought all evening, then suddenly he knew the answer. Anne's clothes are different, he thought. The other girls wear pretty dresses. Marilla makes good dresses for Anne, but they aren't very pretty. Then Matthew had an idea. I'm going to give Anne a new dress for Christmas, he thought. He went to the store in town and tried to buy a dress, but he couldn't because he didn't know much about girls' dresses. Maybe somebody can make a pretty dress for Anne, he thought. But who? I don't know many women in Avonlea. I can't ask Marilla. I know. I'll have to ask Mrs. Lynde. He went to see Mrs. Lynde. Of course I'll help you, Matthew, said Mrs. Lynde. And I won't tell Marilla. It'll be a surprise. On Christmas morning, Anne woke up early. She looked out of the window and felt very happy. The trees were white with snow. She ran downstairs into the kitchen, and Matthew gave her the dress. Anne started to cry. What's wrong? said Matthew. Don't you like it? Oh, yes, Matthew, answered Anne. I love the dress. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm crying because I'm very happy. That night, Anne wore her new dress to the concert. She said her two poems very well. Matthew and Marilla were at the concert, too. Later, they sat by the kitchen fire and talked. Anne did very well tonight, said Matthew. Yes, said Marilla. She's very smart, and she looked very nice in her new dress. She's 13 now, said Matthew. One day she'll leave the Avonlea school. We have to think about her future. Chapter 9 Some Stupid Mistakes one spring afternoon, Marilla walked home. The country was very beautiful, and Marilla felt happy. Anne's at home, she thought. She'll make a good fire, and she'll have tea on the table. But Anne wasn't at Green Gables. There was no fire, and the tea wasn't ready. Where is that girl? thought Marilla angrily. Is she playing with Diana again? She has to do housework first. Matthew came in from the farm, and he and Marilla had tea. But Anne didn't come. When it was dark, Marilla went upstairs to Anne's room. Anne was on her bed. What's wrong, Anne? said Marilla in surprise. Are you sick? No, Marilla, said Anne unhappily. Look at my hair. Marilla looked at Anne's hair. It was green. Anne Shirley, she said. What did you do to it? I dyed it, said Anne. I hated my red hair. Today a man came to Green Gables. He wanted to sell us things. I saw a bottle of black hair dye in his box, so I bought it. But it made my hair green. Go and wash it said Marilla. Anne washed her hair, but the green color didn't go away. Oh, Marilla, she said, what shall I do? The other girls will laugh at me. I can't go to school. Anne stayed home for a week. She washed her hair every day, but the green color stayed in her hair. We'll have to cut it, Marilla said, and she cut Anne's hair short. I'll never hate my red hair again, Anne said. She went back to school. When her friends saw her short hair, they were very surprised. But Anne didn't tell them about the dye. 
After some weeks, Anne's hair looked prettier than before, and it wasn't as red. One day in the summer, Anne and her friends were by the river near Diana's house. There was an old boat there. Let's play a game, said Anne. Do you remember that poem from school about a girl, Elaine? She was unhappy in love. She found a boat on the river and got into it. Then she died. The river carried the boat to a town. Everybody came and saw her. I'll be Elaine. I'll get into this old boat, and the river will carry it down to the bridge. Go and wait for me there. Anne climbed into the bottom of the boat. The girls put flowers into her hands, and Anne closed her eyes. Oh, said the girls, Anne really looks dead. They pushed the boat out into the center of the river and ran to the bridge. The river was very fast and dangerous. The boat was old and not very strong. Suddenly, a lot of water came into the boat. Anne sat up. She was very afraid. The boat went past a large tree, and Anne caught the tree with her hands. The river carried the boat away. Then the boat went down, down to the bottom of the river. Diana and the other girls waited at the bridge. They saw the boat in the river, but they didn't see Anne. Anne's in the river, they cried. Let's go for help. They ran quickly to Diana's house. Anne was very cold and wet. She had her arms around the tree, but she couldn't move. Her arms hurt, and she felt very tired. Help! Help! she cried. Why doesn't somebody come? Suddenly, a small boat came down the river. A boy was in it. It was Gilbert Blythe. And Shirley, what are you doing here? He asked in surprise. Anne told him, and Gilbert brought his boat near the tree. He gave Anne his hand and pulled her into his boat. But Anne didn't look at him. Thank you, she said coldly. Please. Let's be friends, said Gilbert. I was rude about your hair in school, and I'm sorry, but your hair is very pretty now. No, said Anne. I'll never be friends with you. All right, said Gilbert angrily. I'll never ask you again. Chapter 10 The Queen's College Class it was November. Marilla and Anne sat in the kitchen at Green Gables. Marilla's eyes were tired and weak. They often hurt her. I'll go to town tomorrow and get new glasses, she thought. Anne was in front of the fire with a book in her hand. Marilla watched her. She loved Anne very much. She often made pretty dresses for the child now. Anne, she said, Miss Stacy was here today. She talked to me about your future. Would you like to study at Queen's College in Charlottetown? Would you like to be a teacher? Oh, yes, Marilla, said Anne, and her eyes shone. But isn't Queen's College very expensive? Yes, said Marilla, but Matthew and I will pay for you. Six other students from Avonlea wanted to go to Queen's College, too. They studied after school in one class, the Queen's College class. Anne and Gilbert Blythe were the smartest students in the class. Sometimes Anne was first, and sometimes Gilbert. Gilbert was friendly with the other girls in the class, but he never spoke to Anne. When Anne thought about him, she felt sorry. I don't hate Gilbert now, she thought. The Queen's College class was very interesting, and the days went quickly. Winter came again, 
then spring, then summer. At the beginning of the long summer vacation, Anne went home and put her books away in a box. I'm not going to study in the vacation, she said to Marilla. I want to enjoy this summer. There are going to be parties and concerts, and Mr. Barry is going to take us to dinner one evening at the hotel at White Sands. Mrs. Lynde came to tea with Marilla at Green Gables. Matthew doesn't look very well these days, she said. No, said Marilla. He had a problem with his heart last week. He works hard, but he has to be careful. When Anne came to Green Gables, I said unkind things about her, said Mrs. Lynde. But I made a big mistake. She helps you, and she's very pretty now, too. Anne enjoyed her summer very much. In the fall, she went back to school. The Queen's College class started again, and Anne worked hard all year. But she went to parties and concerts, too. When Marilla looked at Anne, she felt a little sad. She's 15 now, she thought. She's almost a woman. By June, Anne and the other students were ready for the Queen's College examinations. They went to Charlottetown and stayed there for a week. When Anne came home, Diana was at Green Gables. How were the examinations, Anne? she asked. They were very difficult, said Anne. I'm very tired now. One evening, three weeks later, Anne sat by the window in Green Gables. The summer evening was very beautiful. The sky in the west was slowly turning red. Suddenly, Diana arrived with a newspaper in her hand. Anne, she cried excitedly, your name's in the newspaper. You came first in the Queen's College examinations. You and Gilbert Blythe, you're the best students on the island. Anne looked at the newspaper. There were two hundred names there. Her name was at the top. Hers and Gilbert's. This is wonderful, Diana, she said happily. She ran to Marilla and Matthew. Then she went to see Mrs. Lynde and Mrs. Allen. You did very well, Anne, they said. Chapter 11 A New Start Anne went to Queen's College and enjoyed her time there. She was in the same class as Gilbert Blythe, but they didn't speak. At the end of the year, there were more examinations. Anne did very well. She won a free place at another college, Redmond College. Gilbert Blythe got a place at the college, too. Anne went back to Green Gables in June. Diana came to see her. I have three months' wonderful vacation at Green Gables, said Anne. Then I'm going to Redmond College. Gilbert Blythe isn't going, Diana told her. His father doesn't have the money. So Gilbert is going to teach in the Avonlea school. Oh, said Anne. Suddenly, she felt sad. The next morning at breakfast, Anne watched Matthew's face. It was very tired and gray. Is Matthew all right? She asked Marilla later. No, said Marilla. He's having problems with his heart again. He works hard, and his heart isn't strong. Some days later, Matthew came into the kitchen and fell to the ground. Anne and Marilla ran to him, but Matthew was dead. Anne was very sad. Later in her room, she cried and cried. Matthew was my first friend, she thought. He brought me to Green Gables. He was always very kind to me. I loved him. Anne woke in the night, and Marilla came to her. Don't cry, she said. 
Matthew was a good brother and a wonderful man. But you have me, and I have you, Anne. I love you very much. Marilla sat at the kitchen table. She looked very tired and sad. Anne put her arms around her. What's wrong, Marilla? she asked. My eyes are hurting again, answered Marilla. I can't see very well, and I can't work. And Anne, there's something worse. I have to sell Green Gables. Matthew and I had our money in the Abbey Bank. But the bank had problems, and now there's no money. She started to cry. Don't cry, Marilla, cried Anne. You don't have to sell Green Gables. You and Matthew did everything for me. Now I'm going to help you. I'm not going to go to Redmond College. I'll teach at a school on Prince Edward Island, and I'll help you with Green Gables. We'll be very happy, you and I. Mrs. Lynde visited Green Gables. You're doing a very good thing for Marilla, she said to Anne. She's very happy. And you can teach at the Avonlea School. I can't, said Anne. Gilbert Blythe is going to teach here. I'll live at Green Gables, but I have to find another school. No, said Mrs. Lynde. Gilbert heard about Marilla's problems. He knows you want to be near Marilla, so he's going to go to the White Sands School. The Avonlea School is yours. That's very nice of Gilbert, thought Anne in surprise. Two days later, Anne met Gilbert on the road. She stopped and put out her hand. Gilbert, she said, thank you very much for the job at the Avonlea School. I'm sorry about everything. Please, let's be friends now. Yes, said Gilbert, and took Anne's hand. I'd like that. Gilbert walked home with Anne. They stood outside Green Gables and talked for half an hour. Later, Anne sat by her window and looked out. It was a beautiful night. I know I'm going to be very happy, she thought. I have a good job and dear friends. Everything is going to be all right.